Today on the Dr. Steve Show, it's all about food, fat, fun, and feeling frisky. We're breaking down the five habits that are making you fat that you aren't even aware of. Plus, we're showing you the five forbidden foods that now can be on your table. This is Dr. Steve. Feel inspired. This show is going to change your life. Feel connected. Feel better. Feel better is not just a slogan for the show. It's actually a challenge, a mission, and a promise from me to you to help you live a healthier life. This is Dr. Steve. Now from the habits that are making you fat to forbidden foods that you can now eat. That's right, some indulgences once considered sinful are now actually acceptable. And here with the information on what they are is Lisa Goslin from Eating Well Magazine. Lisa, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you very much, Steve. So let's start right from the top because a lot of people are afraid to eat eggs, egg yolks in particular, but they got kind of a bad rep. So let's straighten that out. Egg yolks are actually a great, great, great source of protein. And in fact, if you take a look at the egg, it looks like an eye, and there are actually compounds in the yolk called lutein and zeaxanthin, which are good for your eyes. So that's a good reason to eat them. Studies have also shown that people who eat a breakfast of eggs, say scrambled eggs and toast, are less likely to be hungry at lunch or eat more calories at lunch than people who eat the same number of calories in a bagel. Right, so it all comes down to the protein, getting that protein in the morning. And I hope my daughter's listening because I've been getting her to do this and now that she's eating eggs in the morning, she's getting through the day better at school. So Six really, grams really of protein. One exactly. little egg. You can't miss it. All right, another favorite of mine that used to be forbidden, but we have cheese. Parmesan, in fact, one of my favorites. Cheese is actually, I think, something that gets a bad rap because people tend to eat it as a food. At Eating Well magazine, we tend to use cheese a lot as an ingredient instead or as a flavoring. That way you get all the satisfaction. So, for instance, if you take just like a little cube of cheddar, we stuff it into these mini meatloaves and then put a chipotle glaze over it, it's fantastic. Right, so don't and eat it as a meal, eat it as something like almost like a, a garnish or an addition exactly. to something. It's also a great source of calcium and 9 out of 10 women do not get the servings of calcium that they need. So if you think about milk is really compacted into cheese, cheese is a great source of calcium. Alright, well that, that's on my diet as well. Alright, another one that got a bad rap is bread, but I noticed something about this bread that has kind of a theme here mm -hmm. and I think you're going to tell me what it is. So what you're seeing here are, this is a whole grain bread. Now it's very different. Not all brown bread is whole grain, so you really want to look for a whole grain bread. That's important because the new U.S. dietary guidelines are asking us to make half of our grains whole, and whole grains are, are great for us. They help protect against heart disease and have a number of other benefits. Right, and it's really important to read the label on the packages, yes. so you've got to see the word whole in the ingredients, one of the first words. Another, if it just says wheat bread, it's not necessarily Yeah, whole because grain. they add molasses and give it that exactly. color, right? They're trying to trick us. Mm -hmm. All right, so another popular one that used to be banned but I love avocado. Avocados are some of my favorite food. They're mm. terrific. People think that they're incredibly high in fat, and they actually are somewhat high in fat, but a lot of fat is not saturated fat, which is the bad kind. And in fact, if you think about avocados as a replacement for, say, butter or cream, they're a wonderful, healthy food. We, in fact, make this amazing avocado tequila ice cream. Oh, wow. It's dairy-free, vegan, and it is unbelievable. I, I, I love to put it in my salad. Simple as that. Yeah. Just a little bit gives it that it's great, great or little use creamy it as a flavor. Spread. There you go. All right, now, finally, popcorn. You know, and popcorn has gotten so much of a bad rap because people think, oh, you know, it's cooked in oil, but there's a way to make popcorn healthy. So tell me about how you do it here. All you need to do is just take some popcorn kernels, put it in a bag, and put it in a microwave for a few minutes. And that way you're eliminating all the oils and fats that normally give the popcorn a bad rap. Right, so to give it the flavor, because a lot of people are going to say, okay, well, I popped it, but now it doesn't taste like anything. You have a couple of quick treats here. What do yes. we do? At eatingwell.com, we've got a number of recipes to kind of jazz up popcorn and make mm. it really fun and still healthy. So what we've done here is we've mixed a little lemon pepper with a tablespoon of olive oil. Okay, so we drizzle And on. you just drizzle that over. Right. And then we're back to our favorite, Parmesan cheese. Yeah, and just, that. uh, that's a tablespoon of that. And just drizzle that over. This toss is it. Three, you toss it. Three cups of popcorn, 93 calories. Are you going to toss this without making a mess? We're going to try. Lisa, cool. <laughs> All right, well, we'll put it back in the bag and shake it up. How's okay, that? Okay, that sounds Lisa, great. thanks so much. Some great Thank tips. Thank you so really much. Really appreciate coming. Good to see Thank you. Thank you.